Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. And today I want to talk again about basics and explain why we needn't bother trying to master the basics of the language we're learning. I talked a bit about the basics last time or in a previous video, I explained that there is sort of a, a theory, which I uh, basically uh, subscribe to. And that is that different aspects of the language, we're going to learn them in a certain order. To some extent, it depends on what our native language is. It depends on the language we're learning. It depends on what kind of content we're exposing ourselves to, but we can't force it. Things will fall into place when they fall into place. So don't worry about the basics. Don't worry about, you know, when you're quite well along in the language and there's still certain basic terms or basic structures that you get wrong. Uh, don't try to, you know, force the pace by learning the basics up front. I, I think it's a futile exercise. And so I want to get into more detail on this. First of all, what are the basics? If I Google, uh, you know, the basics, the basics of Spanish, the basics of French, the basics of Russian, of Chinese, of Japanese, there's all kinds of pages on the internet, which will give you various versions of what the basics are. They could be basic vocabulary. And some will say, you know, you got to learn the numbers and you got to learn the colors and the names of the months and all of these things are very, or names of different, you know, food products. All of these things are very difficult to remember. I find that numbers and colors take a long time before they sink in and, and studying a list of numbers or days of the month, uh, or excuse me, of months, etc. names of the months is, is not going to help you. You have to kind of learn them gradually as you're exposing yourself to more and more input. Some people say the basics are, you know, hello, how are you? My name is those kinds of phrases, greetings and so forth. But a lot of these things you're going to learn fairly soon in the process. Anyway, one of the reasons why we designed our mini stories at link, with high frequency verbs is because we need verbs and high frequency verbs are quite important for speaking. Those are the ones we're going to use when we start to speak. And in the many stories, there's a lot of repetition in each story of high frequency verbs. And ac across the story, there's a lot of repetition of high frequency verbs. I, I even went to a chat GPT. I asked, what are the basics in Spanish? They gave me a list of 10 things, uh, one of which was wrong. You know, it says, okay, word order in Spanish is subject verb object. Again, we're going to very quickly discover the verb object. We can look at it ahead of time as part of an overview of the language, but very soon if we're exposing ourselves to content and I, I as you know, I recommend our mini stories at link. You're going to come across that. It's going to seem natural to you that that's how they do things in that language. Over time, it'll become the dominant pattern. Gender, Spanish nouns have a gender, masculine or feminine. Yeah, you learn that pretty quickly. That doesn't mean you know which nouns are which gender. Uh, five, of course, ser and estar uh, is, is this aspect basic. Call it basic in Spanish that the verb to be can either be a temporary status or a permanent status. But there's a fair amount of subjectivity there. And the interesting thing about Ser and Star is you can get it wrong and it doesn't hinder communication. So to what extent is that basic to comprehension or communication? I don't think it's that important. I think we gradually get more and more used to it. Uh, Chat GPT also told me that personal subject pronouns, Spanish has personal subject pronouns such as yo, tu, el, ella, which must be used in conjunction with verbs. That of course is not true because in Spain, in Spanish, the verbs conjugate, the endings change. So very often you can tell which person that is without having to use the personal pronoun, but that's chat GPT. That's not necessarily an authoritative source. Um, but then you can go to, I went to another source and here are the basic, you know, topics of grammar for French. And it has terms in here like aspects, habitual, perfective, imperfective, mood, indicative, imperative, conditional, subjunctive. Uh, you know, if you try to learn that up front, uh, you know, conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, I just think it would be very difficult to learn that up front. 
So I don't think you can learn basic vocabulary up front. I don't think you can learn the basic structures up front. I think, as I've said many times, language learning comes down to the three keys that, again, I can't remember her name, but the lady who ran the uh, San Diego State uh, Language Department said it's all about your attitude, the time you spend with the language, and your ability to notice. And so attitude is very important. Of course, we want to improve. Uh, I'm not suggesting we should ignore uh, correct usage correct usage. I mean, this depends as well, but obviously we have a model of the language that we would like to get as close as possible to. So we want to be constantly improving, constantly getting close to this model of the language. Now it could be Brazilian usage of Portuguese or usage in Portugal. It could be usage in Quebec for French or usage in France. It could be um, usage in Taiwan for Chinese or usage in Beijing. We have a model of the language which we like and, and the more we like it, the more we're likely to imitate it. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. We want to get closer to that usage. And so we start to notice more things. The more we listen, the more things we notice. Things that we don't notice at first, we will notice them later on. So the idea, and, and so I think there was a sort of pushback from some people saying, you know, how can you ignore the basics? Uh, uh, we have to have the basics or we can't speak correctly. That's not true. I have tried mastering tables, you know, declension tables in German and so forth, and it didn't work. It was only when I got into more and more listening and reading, expose my, exposing myself to the language, that some of these things started to slot in. So we have to have an attitude of wanting to improve. If we don't want to improve, we won't notice. So even in those three keys, obviously attitude affects the other two. If you like the language, you're going to spend time with the language. If you like the language and you want to notice things in the language, you will notice more things in the language, whether that be pronunciation or usage or whatever it may be. Something like the subjunctive, I don't think we notice it at first. But in time, if we're motivated, if we like the language, if we're hearing someone speak the language in a way that we like and we want to imitate, we're going to imitate the subjunctive. But not using the subjunctive doesn't hinder communication. So it's not a basic in the sense that it prevents communication. It is a basic in the sense that we would like to get as close as possible to this model of usage that we have. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of follow up on my previous video. I didn't want to suggest that we don't want to speak, you know, correctly, or we don't want to, you know, imitate certain standard patterns of usage. I think every serious language learner wants to do that, but achieving that will depend on having an attitude that I like the language. I enjoy the language. I enjoy learning. I want to get better. I want to get closer to that standard of usage. I'm willing to put in the time. There are no shortcuts. It's not as if we can learn a formula. This is how the language works. Now we're going to be able to learn the language more quickly. I don't believe that. We can have an overview if we want, where it tells us that this language is subject, verb, object, or subject, object, verb. Sort of an abstract of the language. I'm not sure that helps very much. Either we don't understand what that overview actually is saying, or we will in any case, as with so many of these sort of basic vocabulary items, basic structures, we will eventually get those through a program of sustained listening and reading. So uh, because there was a certain amount of pushback on this idea of, of avoiding the basics, uh, I thought I would follow up with another video on the subject. By the way, with reference to chat GPT, I am looking at it. I don't know yet where that fits into my la language learning routine or possibly with, with Link. I'm going to be doing a video uh, uh, interview with Luca Lamporello, and I think we may even discuss that subject a little bit. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.